Hi, and welcome to the channel, everyone. Uh, if this is your first time stopping by, I appreciate you taking a look. And uh, if you like what you see, please consider subscribing. It helps the channel a lot. We're trying to build the build the channel and uh, grow some viewers. Um, if you uh, are uh, already a subscriber, appreciate it. Thanks for helping the channel grow. Um, we've had a lot of success lately. The uh, Starlink series uh, has really gotten a lot of views and it's taken off, and I really appreciate everybody watching. Um, today, we are going to review um, a product that I've been waiting for for a couple of years. Uh, so December of 2019, uh, the Pocket Innovations Company, uh, they previously had a small little uh, pocket meter that would link up to your cell phone. And uh, <clears throat> it had some limitations that prevented me from buying it uh, at that time. But then they announced a Pocket Pro that they're coming out with that had the ability to measure higher voltages because I do a lot of industrial work, commercial stuff, control panels. Uh, so I'm measuring mains voltages all the time uh, up to you know 460 volts and on higher than that as well. Um, so their Pocket Pro version was uh, going to be uh, able to handle voltages up to 600 volts with the Cat 3 certification up to 600 volts. So I get in on the early bird. Uh, I was uh, like number 100 and something. Uh, at that time, and then a uh, month or two later, the COVID hit, and then everything got shut down. Now two years, a little over two years later, I uh, finally received this a, a few days ago. So I'm real excited to take a look and uh, see uh, if it meets up to the expectations that I was hoping for. A multimeter, oscilloscope, and data log are built into it. So I'm pretty excited about the, uh, the multimeter's nice and you can link it to your phone, but the data logging could be pretty exciting for what I do. Uh, I could put this in a control panel and, and monitor voltages uh, or control signals over a period of time and then uh, uh, come back and take a look at them later on. So uh, we're going to run this thing through some tests. I got AC voltage uh, all the way from 0 to uh, 460 volts currently on this setup. Um, I've got a function generator. We'll do some uh, oscilloscope tests. Check the DC voltages. I've got a variable DC voltage uh, power supply. Uh, assortment of resistors and capacitors. Um, so we're just going to do some random tests on the on the product and look at the hardware, see how we like it. So let's get started. The Pocket Company has their own YouTube channel. You should check it out. They've got unboxing. They've got uh, tutorials on how to do all the basic features. So um, pretty good information on there. But figured people would want to get an unbiased look at the at the product to uh, see what somebody thought about it that didn't work for the company. So. Let's take a look. So you get it out of the box, you got a little hard carrying case. It's not hard, but it's, it's stiff. So it should give us some good protection. Um, you can keep it in there with a couple of your uh, accessories. I did get a couple of extra accessories with it. So we'll take a look at those. So that's the unit. This has a little cover over the end of it to protect it. Just a standard multimeter type pin connector. Um, came with a few different adapters for that. The ground lead pops out of the side here, and then you can just unwind it. So now you've got your, uh, your positive and negative terminals. On the side, you've got a slider that goes from amps. Get my glasses on here. Uh, one end is the uh, amps. You can do up to 10 amps. The middle setting is for your ohms, milliamps, uh, continuity, got a capacitance checker and diode check. And then on the other end, you've got the voltage check, and you can do, of course, AC, DC voltage. One button up on top here that does, uh, we'll go over some of that stuff, but uh, basically it'll, uh, it allows you to turn it, it wakes the thing up from sleep. It also allows you, if you hold it down, it turns on a little uh, little lamp so you can see your work if you're working in the dark. Um, and you can also hit it to save uh, uh, basically a snapshot of what you see on the screen. It'll put it in your history. So we'll do some of that testing when we get to it. Um, the, uh, the build quality feels pretty solid. It's nice plastic. It doesn't feel flimsy. Um, the cable is very flexible. It's not very big. It's got to be pretty t tiny to get compact enough, but uh, it's very flexible. I would assume like a silicone type material. Um, I don't see any writing on it, so I can't give you any specs on the wire, but it does feel like decent quality, but it's it's flexible. It doesn't feel like that stiff stuff that you sometimes get on the cheaper products. So uh, anyway, uh, a little bit more about the hardware that comes with it. Uh, it is charged with a USB-C connector, an assortment of uh, 
little fittings with it. I don't know if all of these are going to come. Some of these might have been special because we're the uh, the uh, I was a super early bird backer on the Kickstarter program, so some of these might have been special for that deal. I don't know uh, what's going to be included with it in the uh, once it's in regular production. But you get some uh, uh, alligator clips. A little bit more on that in a minute because um, I did have to. There was an issue with those that I'll talk about. But you got a plus and minus for that. <clears throat> Uh, this is kind of handy little little device. These are nice little adapters too. So, so you get these little cones that go over the probes. That snaps on, but it gives you a banana jack connection. You can actually put uh, standard multimeter leads into those if you decided to. If you wanted some nicer, some higher quality or longer leads, you could clamp that onto there. Uh, but there's one of those for the for the ground probe as well as the uh, the positive probe that slides over that, snaps on, so you can put a an anti plug in there for a medium. But it also did come with this BNC adapter. So you can plug these into your probes and you can actually hook a standard uh, oscilloscope probe up to that so that you can uh, do the oscilloscope functions with a normal probe rather than just the, the test leads. Uh, so those are pretty nice. Also came with a couple little spring clips. I don't know what you call these, but you slide that over the tip. But that gives you a little uh, spring loaded retractable hook that you can clamp on, kind of like an oscilloscope probe uh, would have. So there's that. There's also one for the ground connection. But then like, you can hook that onto circuits if you're working on something on a circuit board. So uh, those fit pretty nice. Uh, and it says they are also rated up to the 600 volts. And everything I've seen so far says it's rated up to that 600 volt rating. So um, last thing that came with in the box was these little sleeves. So these are sleeves for the, the meter leads if you're working around other um, components where it may have a risk of shorting out, you can side these sleeves over the the tips of the probe so that you just expose the tip and you don't have to worry about the uh, um, the sides of it shorting out against another component. It does have uh, two fuses inside the unit. It's accessible through the this little cover. Got a very tiny flathead screwdriver to pull those two screws out. I don't know if you can see those or not. Two fuses. There's a 500 milliamp fuse. And that 500 milliamp fuse um, could, uh, protects the uh, the milliamp. Also uh, protects the voltage setting of the meter. So if you have it in voltage, that goes through that 500 milliamp fuse. So if you blow the fuse when you're checking milliamps, you're not going to be able to measure the, the voltage. There's also a 10 amp fuse in there as well, and that's that fuse is only uh, relevant in the amperage setting for when you're measuring up to 10 amps. So. Um, anyway, just note of caution, be very careful that you've got this in the right position um, to do what you want to measure with it before you do it. I mean, that goes with any meter, but particularly this one because you don't have that notification that you would get from like a fluke or something like that. Uh, you just got to be very aware of it. So one of my issues with this, and if uh, the pocket people are watching, this is probably my primary complaint so far, but I have actually found a fix for it. These little alligator clips. I initially had quite a problem with these. So if I pull this protective sleeve off, so see where it stops right there? You got probably a good quarter of an inch for it to slide in and it's, it's secure. When it came, that little plastic sleeve was, was that long and you would go to insert it and then when you stick it on, it was only, was only engaging maybe a, I don't know, a sixteenth of an inch of that tip. So it was floppy and it would just fall off. It wouldn't stay on very well. But I found that the metal goes quite a ways up in there, so that this whole little sleeve was just plastic. So I got a razor blade and I cut that off. Um, so I cut off 3.76 millimeters of that sleeve. Now the little uh, alligator clips fit securely. They slide on, they engage much better. Uh, and I could actually just cut a little bit more off. I didn't cut off the, the red one yet because I wanted to show you guys. Now that's going to engage much sooner, slide all the way up, because the hole goes all the way up through there. I don't know if you can see that, but the hole goes all the way about. So now it's not coming off at all. It's very secure. But yeah, with all that extra length, that doesn't want to slide down very far. So the alligator clip would be recessed quite a ways inside of there. So I'm going to cut off some of that as well. There, now I got that flush with that, I can slide that over. 
much better with that length. The meter links up to a uh, cell phone. So that's your, your primary display. The, the, the meter itself doesn't have any display on it. It will work standalone as a logger. You can wire it up into a panel and have it do data logging for, they say, up to six months. Um, but your actual display requires a cell phone or a tablet. Uh, it connects up with uh, Bluetooth. Um, so I've already connected the device uh, to my phone. Uh, you can actually, uh, they come in different colors. So one thing that's kind of cool is if you have multiple channels, you can do up to four of these. So uh, mine is uh, yellow, so you can actually, if you've got different colors for different channels, you can uh, make the color. That way you always know which, um, which, which meter is for which channel, so that's pretty neat. Uh, you can also change the trace color when it's on the oscilloscope mode. You can change that color so you can have a different color for each one and you can customize that. You can rename the, the channel to whatever you want. Uh, when I first install it, uh, it did have me update the firmware, so it had the most, the latest and greatest, and I guess as they've come up with new features and stuff, they can just update the firmware. Um, it does have a uh, locate feature, so if I hit the locate button, so once you have all of your devices added, and you can click on the measure, and then you can pick multimeter, oscilloscope, or logger. <clears throat> Let's start with the multimeter, we'll do some checks with that. The available settings will change as I change that that uh, slider. So right now I'm in amperage, so the only ones I have are uh, DC current and AC current. Now if I slide it to the middle setting, now you see all these other ones are enabled. Still got the voltage or disabled. Now if I slide it all the way over to voltage, it uh, gives you a little pop-up warning, warning to just to make sure that the switch is all the way fully engaged. Now you can see you can switch between DC voltage and AC voltage. So if they're grayed out, it means you got it in the wrong position. So, you know, make sure you don't hook it up to the wrong thing when it's not set right. Because it doesn't really matter where you got this set, it matters where you got this set to not damage the meter. So, let's start out with uh, just a simple uh, DC voltage check. So I've got it set for DC voltage. And then, uh, so let me get it set up. I'll hook it up my uh, variable DC power supply. I'll wire it up in parallel with my float. We can compare the difference. Let's ramp it up and we'll watch it as it climbs on our DC voltage. So there's five volts. Let's climb. You guys can watch it as I go up. Response time is surprisingly good for um, the fact that it's got to transmit to the phone. Get it up to about 10 volts. See how far we are. So at 10 volts, within the accuracy of, of uh, 1%, we should be within about a tenth of a volt. You know, you can see that we are. So we're still within that uh, 1% at 10 volts. DC, let's climb on up. I do a lot of work with 24 volts, so let's bump it up to that area. So here we could be, you know, 240 millivolts off. We're only uh, 0.2 volts off of that, so still pretty accurate. Uh, see how high my DC supply will go here. There's the maximum. So my DC supply will go up to 31.65, well within the 1%, so very good. Happy with that. Different screens, like multimeter oscilloscope has different functions, so I can go over here and I can select max since I hit reset, it's the maximum voltage has been 22.78. I climb on it from there. So if you want to record a min-max. So you can turn them both on at the same time. So i got a minimum and a maximum. So right now maximum 24.65. If I go down, my minimum will drop. So yeah, that's pretty handy for doing some troubleshooting. And max, and I can just reset it. Excellent. Go back into your functions, and you can deactivate those. Um, and anytime you want to save a voltage, you can hit this uh, save button. It says saved into history, and then you can actually hit this button over here, and it'll pull up your historic things. Anything you've saved in the history will pull up here. 
you can also hit this little uh, yellow button here. Well, it's not yellow on every one of them, but if I hit that while I've got a reading, it'll also save it into the history when you hit that button. So it's just a way for you to do it while you're working. If you're not touching the screen, you can just hit that button and, and record it. So very handy. Let's do an AC voltage test. So I'm going to go in here to mode. I'm going to change this to volts AC. My little uh, test jig here for this AC voltage test. I've got a little power stat. This is a, a 120 volt variac, basically. I've got 120 volts coming into it. I can turn it up and down to vary the voltage to this transformer. This is a little control transformer, 350 VA uh, step up. So I've got it. I've got it configured to step up 120 volts to uh, 460. Um, but this, uh, with this variac installed on that, allows me to vary the output voltage that we see on the meters from 1.3 volts AC all the way up to about 460. So we can watch that as we go and compare the two readings. It's very touchy because it's such a uh, high step up. But so there's 40 volts. <clears throat> so at this voltage, we, sh we can be plus or minus 0.4 volts, and we're only, uh, what, 0 0.2, 0 0.25 away. So, again, we're within the 1% tolerance. Let's keep going up. Try it at 200 volts. So 200 volts, we can be plus or minus two volts. So we got 200.9, so basically 201. Yeah, so we're only a volt off, we can be, so we're only at about 0.05% off right now. So still looking good. Let's take it up to 400. 400 volts. So, yeah, we can be off by four volts here. We're off by three. For my purposes, still plenty close enough. I don't need that much precision, but we're still within the, the 1%. And I'll just take it up to max now. So there's my max. All right, now I want to show the, the logger mode. The data logging mode is something I'm pretty excited about. Um, so if you hit, uh, hit the menu button, then you can hit logger. And now you can get this configured. Right now I have it configured for 100, 100 volts per division. So that's basically the uh, each between each of these bars. If you're familiar with, it, familiar with oscilloscopes, you know that you know each of these divisions, either uh, horizontally or vertically, is how they uh, how you configure it. So I've got 100 volts per division, and I'm going to sampling rate of 500 milliseconds. Every 500 milliseconds or half a second, it'll record a data point for my trend chart or for the data log. I got it set for AC and then volts. Um, now let's go back over here. I can line that up on a certain line. Now the one feature I do like is uh, the fit button. It's kind of nice because it keeps the whole graph within the screen at all times. Uh, if you don't have that on, it'll start up here and then it'll just go off the screen and you won't be able to see the whole thing. So I'm going to put the fit button. That way it'll always stay within the range. And uh, I've lowered that down so that I've got 100 volts per division. I got one, two, three, four, five, six. I could go all the way up to 700 volts. I don't have that much. So let's hit this. This is the start button. So I can start the log. And right now I'm sitting at like 120 volts or something. And you can also hold the screen in any point. And it says at that point where I just made that marker, I'm sitting at 122.83 volts. Um, it'll do two markers and then if you hold the screen down again, it'll delete those two So now that I've got the data log going I can start turning it up and you'll see that it always stays Within that window So I can get it up high there's maximum We'll sit there for a bit. So if I was monitoring a, a you know power in a unit and then you know We had a, a quick drop and you, you could you could see that 
quick drop in voltage, I just turn my uh, my variac down real quick and back up again. But if I see a dip like that, you know, I know there's an issue with the power. Or if we get some sort of gray out, you know, you can turn down power for a couple seconds and then back up. You'll be able to data log that and see it. And if I had the three of these, I could have all three phases on here and, and see if any one phase had an issue. Likewise, I can now uh, pick a spot in my timeline and hold it down. Then I know at that spot I've got 459.38 volts. I could actually move that over to that dip. I know it dropped down to 359.27 volts during that little dip in, uh, in voltage. Um, so I, I haven't done this for any super length of time, but the, the book says this thing will go up to six months of data logging, and that may have something to do with how often you um, take a sample. So when you hit mode here, if I put this on 24 hours, like once every 24 hours, it would take a sample and that wouldn't really be that valuable for this kind of a test for me. But um, depending on how what you're measuring, maybe once a day is enough. Or you can see every day at this time, what is my voltage? Um, but you have a lot of different uh, time frames in here. One second, two second, three, four, five, 10, 20, 30. Then you got up to several different minute scales one hour two hour five hours ten hours so you have a lot of options on there how often you take the samples probably most of the time if i'm doing i'm going to probably want that 500 milliseconds because i need rapid response generally so let's uh turn those off and then when i'm done data logging um, let me turn the power down So there's the end of my log. Let me turn it back up a little bit. So I can stop that data log. <clears throat> I can either hit the, uh, there's a little, little file with a down arrow. That's the save button in here. Or you can also hit the, uh, the little save button on the actual Pocket Pro. But if I push that button there, then I've saved that, that data log to history. Now I can hit that clock and pull it back up. So there's the one I just did. Uh, if I want to pull up an old one, here's an old one I did earlier. And then if I hit this little, uh, the eye, I can pull that up and take a look at it. Here's one that was done earlier. I can uh, uh, take a look at that, 463 volts on that one. And this also tells you at what time in that data log from beginning. So that was 129.845 seconds after I started the test that I encountered that voltage. And then you can move that around. Oops. See what voltage was at what point? 142 volts. So pretty neat, and you can pull up that that data log and then and recover it. One thing I didn't try, maybe I'll try it right now. If I start a data log and then turn this off, um, what I understand is this will keep data logging um, until I come back, and then I may have to import it. I'm not sure how that works. So let's give that a try. I'm gonna I'm gonna start a data log. Okay, so it started there. Oh, I hit fit. All right, so let's do this. Get it up to maximum voltage. So I, so I don't hit stop. I think I just leave that on. So I'm just gonna turn off, I'm gonna do that, exit the app. And let's actually close the app like that so I can kill all my apps so nothing's on. So theoretically that should still be doing its own data logging without me doing anything and I'm not connected to it anymore. Just to be sure, let me turn off Bluetooth. Let me look at my Bluetooth devices. Connections, uh, Bluetooth, Pocket Pro. Okay, so it's not connected right now. But just to be sure, I'm going to turn off Bluetooth. And I'm going to leave that. Let's turn on a little stopwatch here. So, turn that little stopwatch on. We'll come back in a little bit. And uh, see if it logged all this stuff for a while. 
All right, we're just a minute and a half in here. I'm gonna do some adjustment of the voltage just so we can see that on the log. All right, now we're two and a half minutes in. Do some more movement. All right, so let's stop it there. All right, so now it reconnected. Let's go back to measure. Let's go to the logger and see what we got here as for our options. Oh, so it's still spinning. It's still logging. There's all that activity we did. So I had to reactivate the fit button. All right, so we just confirmed it. It will keep logging. You can turn this off, disconnect it. And if that was on a something data logging, it, it would keep doing it. So that's cool. Let's go back to the oscilloscope. The oscilloscope will also handle up to the same 600 volts. So let's uh, let's set this up. I got uh, 100 volts per division still. 10 millimeter AC volts. Let's try that and see what it does. Now my trigger. Let's just do a continuous on the rising edge functions. Okay, let's show the uh, frequency, let's show the peak to peak and the RMS voltage. So we'll turn those three on. So let's take a sample. Boom, okay. So now we've got our sine wave. Uh, this is telling me my house uh, frequency is 59.88 hertz. I got a voltage right now of, oh that's the peak to peak, 458. Uh, 167.9 is the is the the voltage I'm feeding it. That's the RMS voltage. So let me turn that up. So there's 195 volts. 219, 223. Nope, I got off of it. 100 volts per division. So let's hit mode. Let's change this to 200 volts per division. I wonder if it has a maximum peak to peak. So the peak to peak is hitting 1200 exactly and it's clipping it right there. I wonder if that's a limit as I turn it down. It's still stuck at 1200 until I get to a certain point. Yeah. So that must be a peak to peak limit that it has where it clips off the tops. All right, I got a couple of uh, miscellaneous capacitors here, a couple of resistors. Let's check a couple of those things. I'm video is getting a little bit longer but I'm just having fun playing with this thing uh, okay so mode alright so everything's grayed out except for the voltages so we need to switch this switch here uh, right now I don't have the meters hooked to anything so it's open I'm going to switch it to uh, the ohms the ohms milliamp capacitor just make sure it's lined up with the arrow all right. So let's check. Uh, let's put it on capacitance. We'll check the capacitors here. Now we'll put this one on capacitance. All right. So uh, let's try with this first one here. This one is labeled a uh, 47 microfarad it's electrolytic non-polarized cap. So let's hook it up here. So let's disconnect the pocket first. Alright, I got 66.8, so this cap's a little off actually. 66.8 microfarad. Let's disconnect the fluke. And we'll connect it up. Alright, so that one's giving us uh, 60, 61 microfarad. Pretty close to what the fluke was giving us. Alright. But that cap's clearly not very good. Let's try this other one here. This is a 150 microfarad. Let's try that first on the pocket. 150. Nice. So that one's right on the money. Let's see what we get on the on the fluke.
158 microfarad. Okay. Last one I got here is another 47. Let's see what that one comes up with. 46.2. All right, let's disconnect that fluke. We'll hook it up to the pocket. 43, 44 microfarads. Let's change this now to, uh, let's do resistance. I'm going to hook it up to this resistor here. Five hundred and sixty kilo ohms. Let's see what we get on the five sixty. Point five six four mega ohms. Okay, let's change the range here to make it the same. There we go. 564.6 kilo ohms. How about this beast? It's a, just a 20 ohm power resistor. 19.8. 20.7. Alright, I've switched the, uh, the Pocket Pro back to volts. Hit OK. I'm going to go to mo uh, excuse me, menu, oscilloscope. Let's switch it to DC, volts. All right, so I've got my, my Tektronix TDS-2002B. I'll just put it in auto range. And there should be no signal on it right now. Uh, got a little function generator here. Let's start out with uh, just a sine wave at one kilohertz. All right, let's set up measure here. All right, we'll start the sampling. Oh, I didn't turn on the. Set the trigger, free run. Let's just do, let's do continuous. Let's try that first. But I need to change the volts here. All right, let's do that. Okay. All right, so I'm running a one kilohertz sine wave. Uh, the Tektronix does say uh, one kilohertz. Peak to peak 5.48, RMS 1.94. Now on the functions, I can turn on some of that stuff. So let's turn on frequency, let's turn on peak to peak and RMS. So it matches, they're both reading the same thing. Okay, let's move this up a little bit so I can make room for the, the data here. I don't know if you can see that, let me zoom in. All right, so we can see here that 1000 Hertz uh, Signal, we got a nice looking sine wave on the Pocket Pro. It says 998 hertz, um, 5.21, let's jump around a little bit, 5.2 volts basically peak to peak, uh, RMS 1.83. Now let's jump up and take a look at the, uh, the Tektronix. Uh, it's not very clear, is it? So you got frequency, 1000 hertz, 5.48 and 1.94, pretty close, they're, just, they're off by a little. Let's go to 10 kilohertz. So one, this is one thing I noticed when I've been playing with this a little bit. And once in a while when I'm on the oscilloscope, doesn't, haven't, I didn't see it on the multimeter setting or the data logger setting but it will periodically disconnect from Bluetooth and I don't know why that is. It's something to do with when I was on the, the sine wave generator or the frequency generator. It would do that and then it would stop 
collecting. So I got to turn it back on. Let's spread this out a little bit. And the sine wave doesn't look great. But it is showing uh, 10,037.61 hertz. Peak-to-peak uh, -peak 4.891. The Tektronix is showing 5.6 peak-to-peak, so that's off a little bit. 1.72 volts RMS, 1.95 RMS on the uh, on the Tektronix. So there is a little bit of discrepancy there, and this sine wave just doesn't look awesome. Oh, I don't even have it on. <laughs> there we go. <clears throat> All right, so now we got that. Uh, um, it, for some reason, that keeps disconnecting once in a while while I'm doing frequency readings. Um, but I do have uh, 9,980 hertz. So it's a little bit low for my 10,000. Uh, no, actually not. This one's jumping around a little bit too. The, the 9,980. That's reading the same thing, but it is jumping up to 10.01 periodically. But it's so it's jumping around pretty much in the same range. So let's let me stop that. Let me bump the frequency up again. One thing I noticed was the uh, an issue for just looking for issues with it because it works really well. But to get it up to let's try this. So if I do triggering and I set this, let me go for 60 kilohertz. All right. So the Tektronix, I'm at 60 kilohertz. Let me start this one. All right, so I've got that. I mean, you know, that's the that's the lowest sampling I can get is 100 microseconds. So I can't get any. I can't spread it out anymore other than zooming in. I could see it. <clears throat> but one thing I've noticed: if I go above 60 kilohertz, the triggering will have a problem. So let me show you that. 64 kilohertz. <clears throat> yeah. See, when I get up above 64 kilohertz it doesn't want to trigger so it's reading the right frequency it says 64.87 or 64,870 hertz so it's picking that up but I can't get it to trigger let's try it again on uh, let's go a little bit higher let's force it so I took that one and it does say 65, 8, 6, 8. Let's just go higher. Let's go to uh, 100 kilohertz. So I picked it up 101.694 hertz. So 101 kilohertz. Reading a little high. This one says uh, right at 100. Let's go to 200 kilohertz. See, the sine wave starts looking all wonky, but it does read it, so it's 202 kilohertz right there, which, but I'm only feeding it 200, so um, definitely not real happy on the higher end of things. Uh, this is now seeing 3.6 volts peak to peak. I'm still at 5.2 on the Tektronix, so uh, it's the, the higher frequencies, it's definitely falling off, and you don't get a good display. So let's try a different uh, type of wave. There's a square wave. The square wave I found doesn't doesn't look super square. It looks pretty good on that, but you've got compensated probes, so I don't see anywhere how you can do a compensation for squaring up your wave on this oscilloscope. Um, the data looks all right. Okay, let's switch to a uh, triangle wave. That looks pretty good. And I can change the amplitude. All right, how about a sawtooth? Sawtooth looks pretty good. We'll bump up the uh, frequency on that a little bit. Let's go to 30 kilohertz.
There we go. Oh, that's odd. It's jumping around from 60 kilohertz. It might have something to do with the triggering. Let's do a falling. Yeah, see, and I just lost my connection again. Now it's going to turn that off in a minute. That might be some kind of bug. I don't know if it's, it's only done that to me on the oscilloscope. I don't know why it's shown double. I'm at 30 kilohertz. My Tektronix says 30 kilohertz. This thing says 60 kilohertz. And notice that periodically when I'm checking various things. Um, let's do a free run. See what that does. I just lost my connection again. On free run, it's jumping around. It's going between 30 and 60. And my battery's going to die on me. So yeah, I don't, I don't know what's up there. Let's try uh, 40 kilohertz. Uh, 40s jump around. Sometimes it doubles the the frequency doubles when it's trying to read it. So I'm not the best with oscilloscopes, so there might be doing something I'm doing wrong. Uh, feel free to mention in the comments if you see something I'm doing in, incorrectly that might uh, help this. So if I do a uh, just a force like a or a one time. Let me try to do it one time. Lost my connection again. Huh. Whenever I change the mode some or the triggers, sometimes it, it loses its connection. That's weird. I'm not getting anything out of that. And I lost connection again. One time falling. Let's try that. Got that one. And that one did give me my 40 kilohertz. So the oscilloscope, it works. I, it depends on how precise you need it. Like I said, I'm not the best with it. I only use it for very specific things, and I just use this Tektronix for, for some of the equipment that I had to service. And that was very, very narrow window of requirement that I had for makers and uh, you know Arduino projects Raspberry Pi stuff maybe you know kind of robotics things like that like little crafts that would certainly do more than enough probably what else do we test okay so one thing I wanted to show continuity a lot of people use the continuity checker for stuff and uh, some less expensive meters do have a uh, a bit of a lag. Let's see how quick the response is. So let's go back to the multimeter. Uh, we'll change this back to the uh, continuity, like the middle setting. Let's go to mode. Let's check uh, continuity. Okay. So here we're looking for the response time and how well it. Uh... So you have two beeps. You have a beep coming out of the instrument, which is pretty quick. I don't know if you can hear that. Let me turn this down because you can't hear it with that on. So you turn your volume down on your phone. Let's see. Not super fast, but I've definitely seen a lot worse. The the phone, as you would expect, is a bit of a lag on it. Uh, it's quite loud, which is nice for a noisy uh, equipment room. And that turns on just a just a half second later. For my purposes, it would be completely fine. Got the little torch on it. You can turn it on from here. Uh, not super bright, but I think if you were in a dark uh, panel or something, control panel, it would be adequate. 
but uh, uh, and you can also turn that on by holding down this button if you hold that down turns it on but it saves them in the history at the same time so that one's kind of weird uh, temperature I think it does ambient temperature functions min max um, okay so on temperature you do have a uh, Celsius and Fahrenheit. So right now it's 86.7 Fahrenheit in here. Uh, it's probably a little warmer because I got my hand on it. Um, but you also can do an external, and that would be if you had a probe that you were going to actually connect up to the probes. You'd have to have like a thermocouple or something to wire into this. You could just uh, put this unit inside of uh, any kind of a thing. For me, it would be a control panel or some kind of a piece of equipment where I needed to monitor the temperature. All right, well, this video may have ended up longer than I anticipated, but there was kind of a lot of things I wanted to cover. I'll try to, hopefully I've been able to uh, compress it down to um, not too long and give you all the information. So, um, overall verdict, uh, I'm really happy with it. I think it was worth the wait. I mean, I got a good deal on it because I was a, a you know, super early bird backer, but uh, um, I would certainly pay more than I paid for it. You know. Uh, um, I kind of need to get some more of these so I can do the uh, multi-zone. You know, it'd be nice to have at least three for me because I do a lot of three-phase stuff. Um, the, uh, I mean, the accuracy on the oscilloscope was the only area where uh, I was a little unsure of it, and it seemed to be a little glitchy. Once in a while, I would lose the connection for some reason. I don't know what the story is on that. Maybe, uh, maybe Pocket can uh, help us with that. Uh, they've been very responsive when I was communicating with them, talking about a few various things. Um, so uh, they're pretty good about that. <clears throat> they do have a, a website where you can give them uh, suggestions for features if you have something that you have an idea. Uh, I'll certainly be talking to them about a couple of the things, uh, particularly these little these little alligator clips. Um, I was thinking I was just going to toss these, but once I figured out I could just cut that off, um, they were great. So those were good. Um, other than that, it's a, it's a nice little uh, unit, very compact. I do a lot of traveling as well, so for me to be able to put that in my suitcase and carry it to a job site, um, you know, or even just have it in my pocket for little spot checks here and there, I mean, I, I, I don't think it can replace my fluke meters and um, a lot of different meters that I use. I got LCR meters, fluke meters, I, get, I usually carry two or three of them, clamp on amp meters, um, but it definitely will have a place in my tool bag. Um, and it'll give me a lot of the data logging I really like and uh, particularly if I can get my hands on a couple more of these once they go into full production um, I definitely would be interested in having a few of these so um, thanks for watching hopefully this wasn't too uh, painful to watch me fumble around with this try to make it work but uh, uh, it's a pretty cool little voltmeter very small compact they did a good job on the case very uh, very secure solid feeling um, I like the way the cord wraps around there. It stays very tucked in and nice. It doesn't uh, hang out. It, it snaps in there pretty securely. I don't think, I don't, I, you know, it, it's hard to say after a while because this is only going to have it for a week, but it definitely snaps in there pretty securely. It doesn't feel like it's going to fall out or anything. And then, of course, you got the case. So, um, pretty cool. Thanks for watching. Um, you got anything that you, uh, tips or something that you wanted me to check on it or test, I'm happy to do so. Uh, just leave it in the comments below. Like I said, if you've enjoyed this, if it's been valuable, please like and subscribe. We're working really hard to build the channel and uh, get our subscriber count up. Um, but uh, So we would appreciate the, uh, the subscription. Take care and have a good day.